Hi, Jules, Jules Cruise Companion. On a recent trip on Carnival Splendor, I tried to get some footage of the signage and the accessibility elements of Carnival Splendor. Unfortunately, it was only a four-night cruise, so I didn't necessarily get uh, a lot of time to do what I wanted to do. So um, I will cobble together some information that may be helpful if you're interested in sailing on Carnival Splendor and you have maybe mobility issues or just some general footage just to give you an idea on what the boat, boat looks like. This is an image of a wayfinder on Carnival Splendor. In a previous video, I've explained the difference between starboard and port and how to know which side of the boat that your room is on and on this boat it has this additional signage that tells you the odds and the even numbers of where your cabin is. And in these first images you can actually see that zebra style circle pattern which is synonymous of this Joe Farkas interior designed ship. Some signage is well signposted, where others are not. This is a typical type of sign on Carnival Splendor, this little twinkly light situation. This donut decorated door is an accessible bathroom as indicated with this signage. It's a well appointed and standard accessible bathroom. The donuts on these doors are for public access bathrooms. But as you move around the ship and see lifts, for example, with circles and donuts all over them, the whole design is really difficult to navigate because there's no differentiation between spaces. So if you are a person that may have sensory issues with sight, sound and space, you may have to do some preliminary work to get yourself in a ready state to travel on Carnival Splendor. The interior design by Joe Farkas focuses on the white star line. So most of the floors, the decks that have cabins on it, have these stylized 1920s whimsical images, photos, and I'm slowing up here because there is a small sign just here on the ceiling and that actually indicates that there is an ironing room just nearby. There are a couple of laundries on Carnival Splendor that I believe just take the sale and um, sign card. I don't believe it's a token system. I'll look at carpets in a more depth later, but if you look on this corridor, there is absolutely very little uh, defining points that you could use as a wayfinder. But I will have a close look at how to use the exit signs as part of your negotiating or navigating strategies around Carnival Splendor. I use the green exit signs as a strategy to know where I am. So ones with a straight ahead arrow means that is the direction to travel. And if it goes to the side, that means that the exit is in that direction. But in addition, there is a small sign here that indicates that there is a lift nearby. I'm just gonna make a few comments about doors. This is what a traditional door we would think of on a cruise ship, a heavy wooden door with glass. And so here's a few examples, but what I found quite disturbing on Carnival Splendor was that most of the doors, because it's designed for a Northern European environment, the doors are actually um, imposing, unfriendly, and almost look like blast doors. So this I'm demonstrating here both for the cloud spa sign as well as the door that door just does not look welcoming and inviting in any way. This is in the Red Frog. And if you exit that door that looks like a blast door, there is actually a promenade deck just outside. You can see reflected through that window. Now I'm gonna be looking at just general signage. This is a spaces that we would normally be really interested and comfortable with during traditional cruising. 
light, bright and airy. But when you come onto Carnival Splendour, these donuts, zebra issues are just everywhere. These are fire doors and above that is the twinkling sign for the Lido deck. These are the twinkling lights for the um, Black Pearl restaurant. That is the clearest example of one of these twinkly lights that just change colour. They're difficult to see unless you're standing there for a period of time. So we'll follow this lady and we go through zigzag, zigzag of these circle zebras through the um, fire doors with the donuts on them. So this is to the aft of the boat. We're looking out towards Serenity and I'm demonstrating the little shiny lights that demonstrate to you where the Artisan Deli and the Indian type restaurant is on the aft deck here by Serenity. Over by the Artisan Deli there is a more traditional signage that you could read quite easily without having to stop and focus on trying to interpret the message. So this is both the carpet, the signage, etc. going through to the gold pearl restaurant and also the red frog. Now this would have to be one of my favorite spaces both for signage, feel, texture of the floor covering, walking in here to the line dancing. And I've also demonstrated before this unfortunate blast door looking thing. But there is also a space for games. But the signage, the lighting is all a much more calm, comfortable space. Now traversing through Carnival Splendor on I think this is deck five, you have to go through the casino. And I will do this one without sound and then I will leave one in going the opposite direction with sound. But looking at those big silver pillars, the starry twinkly lights on the ceiling that are reflected on that glossy dark tile on the floor, it's a very overwhelming space. Looking at the Our House sports bar, you can see the light is barely legible and then as it fades off, you can't see anything at all. Entering, you have two different types of carpet and multiple colours and reflective decorations on the wall. I will put some of the sound in for this space where you can hear the televisions, etc. But it's a, a bar that actually has two entrances, even though it only looks like it has one entrance and it's very narrow. So what, that was one of my initial concerns about a lot of these spaces only appear to have one entrance unless you really look hard to find a second. The signage on Cherry on Top is once again very small and so is the one for the coffee shop. Cherry on Top is not open very often where the children can buy sweets. The coffee shop has just got this really small sign um, that's not very well differentiated. Big silver pillar again as we walk down a little further past the children's only kind of bar type area. Big silver pillar right in the middle of the walkway. This is the children's space. Right in the middle of that walkway is a silver pillar. Another coffee shop, or oh, the other one was a juice bar, sorry, big silver pillar. Now we're coming up to my favourite signage of the whole of Carnival Splendour. That one is the red carpet room. You very dark and dingy and you can't necessarily see its sign. There it goes just flashing on. This is my favourite sign. You can see it all the time. It never changes and you can't go wrong knowing that it is where the children's play area is. Big silver pillar right in the middle of the walkway that I have to navigate myself around as I'm walking towards the after the boat on the fifth deck um, heading down towards the alchemy bar. If you're looking at some older deck plans that could be a wine bar signage there is very poor but it is a absolutely fabulous space traditional light bright with those wood grains fabulous space going past the grand piano space very dark with the kitsch little tables that look like the top of a grand piano not a bar that's open very often so if you're looking for some quiet space that could be a nice space to be and walking down to the after the boat to the El Morocco where once again I think it's a very traditional looking room within a boat for an entertainment space.
scattered seating, raised areas to be able to look over the central stage area, nice bright lighting, uh, pleasant carpet with comfortable furniture, lovely space. This next section I'm going to leave the sound in and just not talk for a bit so you can actually get an idea of what type of overwhelming sounds are on Carnival Spender. sensory issues that you have maybe some sound deadening earphones or something of that nature. I mentioned before I make comments about the carpets on Carnival Splendor. You can't really tell which direction you are walking if you were looking on a carpet. Um, carpet um, from a visual perspective looks tatty but it's actually brand new carpet. And when you're in this space in our house for example the two different colours is quite overwhelming. This is probably one of the nicest carpets on the whole of the ship. It's light, it's bright, it's reflective and the path is not obstructed by a big pillar. This is in the dining room where it is a lovely pattern, nice and easy on the eye and not confronting at all. So also talking about the dining room, this is an example of the Black Pearl restaurant and you can see the balustrade there has a bumping kind of handrail to represent pearls and those round sections are represent pearls and on the ceiling there is what could be an upside down fried egg which and then in here is the booths which kind of look like clam shells or pearl oyster I hope some of that information was interesting for you and uh, so you get used to the interesting signage on Carnival Splendor, those little dots that just blink, 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 the whole theme of the pearl and the little round circles can be a little overwhelming. So this is Julie Jules, Cruise Companion, saying stay safe everybody and happy travels. Mm -hmm.